In this video, we will learn how to study systems in equilibrium. Recall from Newton's second law that the force on a system is equal or proportional to the mass times the acceleration of that system. When a system is in equilibrium, the acceleration is said to be zero. Therefore, the force on the system is zero. It follows that the moments on the system are also zero. In a 2D system, there are three degrees of freedom. X and Y translation and out of plane or Z rotation. Since the force on the system can be written as X and Y components, to make this vector valued equation into a scalar equation, we simply dot it. By dotting it with the X vector, we have the X component. The resultant force on the system in the X direction is equal to zero which is commonly denoted as the sum of the forces in the x is equal to zero. Similarly, by dotting in the y, we find that the force from the system in the y is equal to zero, or the net force in the y is equal to zero. This gives us two equations. There is another equation in planar equilibrium. The moments from the system is equal to the moment from the system in the z direction. By dotting with the z hat vector, we find that the moments from the system is equal to zero, or the net moments in the z direction is equal to zero. This gives us three scalar equations in two dimensions. Consider a planar system that is being described by two axes, one x hat and y hat, and another axis nx and ny that has been rotated by some degree theta from the x axis. A resultant set of forces in this system described with two bases could be said to have force components along the x-axis, force components in the y-axis, force components along the n-x-axis, and force components along the n-y-axis. In equilibrium, these will all sum to zero. Would it then be possible to dot with the x-hat, y-hat, n-x, and n-y to result in four different equations? The answer is no. Since this is a two-dimensional space, it can be described by a linear combination of two vectors, and any additional vectors are said to be linearly dependent. What this means is that there can be only two equations generated from the translational degrees of freedom. Remember we had an additional equation that the sum of the moments in the z is equal to zero. Can't I sum this moment about multiple points to generate multiple equations? The answer again is no. You can have no more equations than you have degrees of freedom. You are free however to choose which three equations you want to choose. For example, you could choose three moment equations and zero force equations or two moment equations and one force equation or lastly you could have one moment equation and two force equations. For three-dimensional equilibrium there are six degrees of freedom. Three translational and three rotational. Therefore we have six possible independent equilibrium equations. The common equations used are as follows. We can dot with x to get the sum of the forces in the x is equal to zero. We can dot with y to get the sum of the forces in the y is equal to zero. And we can dot with z to get the sum of the forces in the z direction is equal to zero. The moment equation will also give us three equations. So we can dot with z x to get the sum of the moments in the x direction is equal to zero, the y, and the z, and the z. Given this information, it is possible to solve for six unknowns in three dimensions. Now that we understand how to generate equilibrium equations, how can we apply these equations to solve problems with equilibrium analysis? The first step in this process is to read the problem statement and determine what system or systems you're going to analyze. The next step is to draw a free body diagram of the systems of your choice and clearly state what assumptions are needed to make the free body diagram. Make sure you include relevant geometry including dimensions and a coordinate system. Next step is to write out all the forces as vector equations that appear in your free body diagram. Next, you will generate and solve the equilibrium equations based off the force vectors in your free body diagram. The final step is to check your solution and interpret the significance of the results. 
Let's use the steps we just discussed in equilibrium analysis to solve problem 3-5. In this problem, it is given that the board exerts a 25 Newton downward force on the roller at C, and we are asked to determine the reactions at A and D. Connection B is given as a rigid connection, and, and A and D have a non-slip coating, which can read as frictionless. The first step in this analysis we decided is to choose the system of interest. For us, since we want to find the reactions at A, we want to choose it so that they are an external force. Therefore, if we choose the roller stand and remove the ground and the board, the force from the board and the force normal context from the ground will be external to the system of choice. With the system A, B, C, D chosen as our system of interest, we can draw our free body diagram. In the free body diagram, I have drawn the system, the external forces at A, C, and D, along with axes, and relevant dimensions. The assumptions that were made to generate this free body diagram is that normal contact between the ground and the rollers at A and D. This has been assumed to be a frictionless normal contact. I've also assumed that this is a 2D planar problem. Another assumption that was made was that the normal contact between C and the board is frictionless. And the other assumption that we make in most of our static analysis is that this is a rigid body analysis. I have converted the problem statement into a system that we can now analyze. The next step is to write all the force vectors in the free body diagram that you've drawn as vector equations. Now I've written out all the external forces that I've drawn in my free body diagram. I am ready to solve using equilibrium analysis. For our equilibrium analysis, we recall that the force on the system, for our equilibrium analysis, we recall that the resultant force on the system is equal to the zero vector and the resultant moment on the system is equal to the zero vector. In two dimensions, this gives us the sum of the forces in the x equals zero, the sum of the forces in the y is equal to zero, and the sum of the moments in the z is equal to zero. Looking at the external vectors in our free body diagram, we see that none of them have x components. Therefore, the sum of the forces in the x will not provide useful information for our analysis. We have two unknowns, fa and fb and two equations, some of the forces in the y and the sum of the moments. Writing out the sum of the forces in the y, we get the following equation. We must write one more equation to solve this. We must choose one more equation to solve this problem. To sum the moments in z, we must choose a moment center. There are infinite points that we can choose, but there are three points that we easily have geometry for. Point A, point C, and point D. When taking a moment about a point, it is convenient to eliminate an unknown. If we were to use A as our moment center, Note that the force at A contributes no moment about A because the radius is zero. Similarly, if we take the moment about D, the force at B contributes no moment about D because the lever arm to D is zero. If we were to take a moment about C, note that force A and force B both contribute to the moment at C and the one known, the 25 Newtons, would contribute no moment. Therefore, the most useful points to take moments about is either A or D. We'll take the moments about a. Recalling that the magnitude of the moment is the perpendicular force component times the lever arm, the sign can be determined from the right hand rule. This equation gives us one unknown, Fb, which we can calculate. Solving for this equation, we find that the force at B is equal to 16.5 Newton. Solving the equation for Fb, we find that the magnitude of the force at B is equal to 16.5 Newtons. Plugging this into the force in the y direction, we can solve for Fa. We find the magnitude of the force at A is equal to 8.5 Newtons. With the magnitudes of the force at A and B determined, we can now write the forces in their vector equations. To check this equation, we take the sum of the moments at point B. This should equal zero. 